the madman. Welcome to a very special segment, Trump Reviews, Trump Reviews, Trump Reviews. Ultimate Infestation, five star. Five stars currently, five stars in the future. So, Ultimate Infestation did turn out to be five stars. Best card I've ever revealed. Uh, great in Jade Druid, great in Big Druid. Hadronox, one star. One star, yep. now Turned out to be one future. star. Malfurion the Pestilent, five stars. Five stars now and in the future. Right. Yeah, Malfurion Pestilent, uh, really, really good Death Knight. One of the best ones, it turned out. And great in Jade Druid, great in Big Druid. Green Plague, four stars. Five stars now, three stars in the upcoming version of it. I thought the meta was going to go towards Temper Rogue and Raza Priest. It did. And Spreading Plague wasn't going to be quite good enough against Raza Priest. But it turns out there was still enough aggro out there for Spreading Plague to be good. So still ends up being five stars played in Jade Druid and Big Druid. Love Weave, one star. One star now, one star in yep, the future. Yep, one star. Great Spinner, one star. One star now, yep, one, one star, star in the future. Strong Shell Scavenger. One star. Three stars now, two stars in the future. Strong Shell Scavenger, you might have forgotten since it was actually played in a mid variant of Druid uh, about one month into the expansion. And I thought that Druid would see decline because I had already seen uh, its decline. But it turns out that's not even two star because it's a one star since after that month it basically fell off the earth. Nash, one star. One, one star, star now, one star in the future. Crypt Lord. Three stars. Five stars now and five stars in the future. Turned out to be five stars. Crypt Lord was really good. Uh, it replaced Tar Creeper. Into the Swarm. Four stars. Five stars now and five in the future. This card makes Token Druid really powerful because it's just so many stats on two mana. And it's five star. Just like Crypt Lord. Abominable Bowman. One star. One star One now star. and in the future. Deathstalker Rexar. Three stars. Four stars now. Five stars in the future. Deathstalker Rexar ends up being three stars. Midrange Hunter is a tier three deck. And Deathstalker Rexar is not in all midrange hunter decks. It's kind of a tech choice. You can go bigger, you can go more aggressive. Uh, Deathstalker Rexar is not a card that defines a midrange hunter deck. So three star clearly. Corpse Widow, three stars. One star now, one in the future. So Corpse Widow actually did see a little bit of experimentation post nerf. And then it fell off in popularity, so it's accurate to call it a two-star card. Exploding Bloatbat, one star. One star now, one in the yeah, future. Yeah, one star. Professor Putricide, one star. One star now, one in the future. One star Air indeed. Shark, one star. Three stars now, four in the future. It was expected to go up in popularity because Hunter didn't get hit by any of the nerfs, and Bear Shark was in all of the Hunter decks. Bear Shark is still in all of the Hunter decks, but I don't think it is defining of a Hunter. I don't think it's that great a card in that deck. Uh, and Hunter is a tier 3 deck, so we're going to rate Bear Shark 3 stars. Stitch Tracker, 1 star. 3 stars now, and 3 in the future. Stitch Tracker did see a decent amount of experimentation after the patch changes. However, it's fallen off because Hunter either is going more aggressive, and there's no place for Stitch Tracker, or actually Stitch Tracker is just too slow. So... It ends up being a two-star card for having seen a decent amount of experimentation, but falling out of popularity. Toxic Arrow, one star. One star one now. One star, lol, Toxic Arrow. Venom Strike Trap, one star. One star now one star. and in the future. Play Dead, one star. One star now and in the future. While this card did see a little bit of experimentation, not really enough to... Actually, we will go for two stars, because it did see some amount of play legitimately at higher levels. And it is pretty good with Devil Sore Egg, as it turns out. In the case of anything being one star versus two star, I'm going to try to round up to two stars. Frostlet's Jaina, two star. And two stars now, and two stars in the future. So Frostlet's Jaina was in a really bad spot because a control mage simply didn't manage to outvalue Jade Druid. It would lose all the time to Raza Priest. But it turns out that... Control Mage managed to make it to a tier 3 deck, and it is a deck carried by Frost Lich Jaina. So, this is a 4 star card. And if you think Control Mage is actually a tier 2 deck, which some people will argue, then you could even argue it's a 5 star card. It carries Control Mage so hard that maybe it even deserves a 5 star rating just by itself, even though it's a tier 3 deck. Glacial Mysteries, 1 star. 1 star, one now star. And in the future. Cinder Ghost, though, 1 star. 1 star, now one star. And in the future. Ghastly Conjurer. 
four stars. Three stars now, and two in the future. So this card actually ends up being a three star card as a tech card that sees play sometimes in Secret Mage. And I love the design of this card. It's just the right level of power where it comes in and out depending on whether or not you want to tech against aggro. Frozen clone, three stars. One star now and one in the future. Yep, one star. Simulacrum, two stars. Three stars now and three in the future. Yep, three stars as a card that does see consistent play in the tier three deck of Quest Mage. Old Wraith, one star. One star now and yep, in the future. One star. Dream Defrentis, one star. One star now and in yep, the future. One star. Ice Walker, one star. One star now and later. Yep, one star. One star. And this one's two stars now and later as well. This one actually ended up being one of the special cases where it was a two star card, rightfully, because it did see some amount of experimentation serious experimentation in Secret Mage, but it has since fallen out of favor. I actually think Breath of Syndragosa and Cold Wraith both have potential, given a little bit more good freeze effects to actually see play them. But yeah, this one's one star. Uther of the Ebon Blade, five stars. Two stars now and also later. So one of the ideas that I had for the strongest deck, uh, unfortunately didn't come to fruition because the Jade Druid and the Raza Priest just outvalued it too much, uh, just too slow. So, ended up being two stars as a deck that's way in tier 4. Like, really low in tier 4. There's some, just some people who love playing Control of Paladin and are still playing Uther. Guard, one star. One star now and later. Black Guard was one of the toughest cards to rate one star initially, but it does end up being one star. Bolvar Fireblood, four stars. One star now and later. Bolvar ends up being one star. Light Sorrow, one star. One star now and later. Yep, one star. Arrogant Crusader. Three stars. One star now and later. One star. Chillblade Champion. Three stars. Three stars now, two stars later. Chillblade Champion is two stars. It sees occasional play in the tier four deck of Hand Buff Paladin. Howling Commander. One star. One star now and later. One star card. Conviction. Three stars. One star now and later. Yep, one star. Desperate Stand. One star. One star now and later. One star. Righteous Protector. Five stars. Five stars now, four stars later. In Murloc Paladin, she's now just a tech card. So we're, we're going to relegate her to the three star status. You see enough of her to not say that she just used to be played and then uh, fell out of popularity. She's still played occasionally. So that's why this is a three star card now. Obsidian Statue, two stars. Five stars now, five in the future. Yep, turns out to be five stars because it is a card that defines Big Priest which did manage to make it to tier 2. Sure. Shadow Reaper Anduin, 4 stars. 5 stars now and later. Uh, huge 5 star card, carries Raza Priest. Archbishop Benedictus, 1 star. 2 stars now and later. Uh, turns out to not be 2 stars, this is another one of those cards that did see a bit of play in Raza Priest for a brief period of time and then fell out of popularity. So it ends up being 1 star since uh, the point where it fell out of popularity was after the patch. Embrace Darkness, three stars. One star now one and star. later. One star. Shadow Essence, one star. Five stars now and later. Yep, five stars because it is a deck that defines Big Priest, and Big Priest is a tier two deck. Devour Mind, one star. One star now and later. Devour Mind uh, sees a very, very small amount of tech into Raza Priest, into Big Priest. Enough that I'm willing to call it a two-star card. Personal opinion, it's no good at all, and it probably would fall out of popularity, but hey, that's the point of the two-star rating. Eternal Servitude, three stars. Five stars, one now and later. Yep, five stars is another one of those cards that was really defining a big priest. Acolyte of Agony, one star. One star one now star. and later. Spirit Lash, one star. Four stars, now and later. So the reason why I initially called it four stars is because... It was only a one of in Raza Priest. And I was going to say, okay, if it's just a one of in that deck and it's not even that good, then we'll just four star. But it turns out that it started seeing play in Big Priest as well, which definitely pushes it into five star territory. Shadow Ascendant, one star. One star, now and later. Shadow Ascendant, we're going to rate a two star card because it is in a very fringe deck right now. It's in a deck called Zoo Priest. It runs powerful cards uh, such as this one and Cabal Talon Priest, and it actually managed to find some bit of a home for it. Valera the Hollow, five stars. Four stars now, three stars later. Valera the Hollow uh, gets a two-star rating as a card that 
didn't really pan out. Fell out of popularity. Spectral Pillager, one star. One star one now star. and later. Bone Baron, one star. One star now one and star. later. Lillian Voss, three stars. One the star lost boss later. gets a one star. Or Taunter, one star. One, one star, star now and later. Shadow Blade, one star. One star now and later. A last minute surprise here has Shadow Blade actually getting a three star rating as a very valid tech card in Tempo Rook. Plague Scientist, one star. Three stars now, four stars later. Uh, ends up being the same rating as Shadow Blade at three stars. Uh, also a valid tech in Tempo Rogue. Also not very popular in Tempo Rogue, but a valid tech nonetheless. Legion Poison, one star. One star now and later. One star. Roll the Bones, one star. One star now and one later. Star. One star. Doomerang, one star. One star One star. Nope. A lot of people laughed at me for reading all those rogue weapon things at one star, but who's laughing now? Fury Giant, two star. One star now and later. That was a one star. One star. One star now and later. One star. Roll Death Seer. One star. Four stars now and later. Uh, yep, it ended up being four stars after all. But this card isn't quite unfair enough to push into the five star category, I think. Voodoo Hexer, two star. One star now and later. One star. Avalanche, one star. One star now one and star. later. Icebreaker, one star. One star now and later. One star. Jakari Defender, one star. One star now one and star. later. Cryostasis, one star. One star now one and star. later. Ice Fishing, two star. One star one now star. and later. Burlock. One star. One star. One now star. And later. Haha, <laughs> free shaman. Blood Reaver. Poor shaman. Ghoul Dawn. One star. Four stars. Now and later. This card is a five star card. Uh, it is run in Control Warlock, which is where pretty much everyone thought this card only stuck in. And if it were only in Control Warlock, it would be a four star card because Control Warlock is a three uh, tier three deck and it defines it. But to everyone's surprise, this 10 mana card, it's a great card in Zoo as it turns out. No one saw that coming. So, five star card. Blood Queen Lanathel, one star. One star now and later. One star. Despicable Dreadlord, two stars. Four stars now, five stars later. Yep, five star card is a card that's run in both Zoo as well as Control Warlock, and it's very powerful. Treachery, one star. One star now and later. It is one stars. I was almost tempted to give it two stars because it does see a little bit of play in Legend Ranks, but I'm convinced that it's entirely memes. Unwilling Sacrifice, one star. One star now and later. One star. Alphine. One star. One star now. Similar to Treachery, this is only in the meme decks. So it is going to get a one star card. Later. Defile. One star. Four stars now, four stars later. Yep, that's a four star card. Is a card that's great in Control Warlock and defines it. Uh, but Control Warlock is a tier three deck. So four stars. A lot of people are giving the lulls on this, but I'm going to repeat again what I said in the Trump Reviews Trump Reviews, Control Warlock barely made it to tier 3 yet again. So I was almost right yet again, because if Control Warlock kind of falls off to the tier 4, that's a 2 star card. Almost doesn't see play, but see it's just enough play for it to be 4 stars. Drain Soul, 1 star. 3 stars now, 4 stars later. Drain Soul ends up being closer to a 3 star card because it's not in all copies of Control Warlock. Gnome Faradu, one star. Really big surprise, two stars now, three stars later. Ends up being two stars now, because Gnome Faradu did see a little bit of a resurgence in Control Warlock as a valid way to win, uh, but it has since not been as popular. Fun fact though, uh, Tempo Storm used Gnome Faradu to win the last week of Trinity series. And a Control Warlock, Control Warlock Mirror, really good in that uh, matchup. Sanguine Reveler, one star. One, one star. star now and later. Scourge Lord Garrosh, four stars. Five stars now, five later. Ends up being a three star card. Let me start off by saying that of all the classes, Warrior is the only class that does not get any representation in a tier one, tier two, or tier three list. Granted, this goes a little bit against my own personal experience and belief that Dead Man's Warrior is actually a legitimate deck. In which case, Scourge Lord Garrosh would be a 4 star card, because it defines that deck. However, because I'm rating Dead Man's Hand Warrior as a tier 4 deck, we are going to rate Scourge Lord Garrosh as a tier, as a 3 star card, as a card that defines this tier 4 deck. Rot Face, 2 stars. 1 star now and later. 1 star. Death Revenant, 1 star. 1 star now one and star. later. Blood Razor, 
Five stars. Five stars now and later. Bloodraiser also gets the surprise three star treatment, but due to Bloodraiser and Scourge Lord Garrosh both forming a core in control warrior decks of either Nazoth or Dead Man's Hand, and both of those deck archetypes not actually being that successful, both of these cards will get the three star treatment. Mountain Fire Armor. One star. Two stars now, one star later. Uh, this one gets a two star rating as it is in Nazoth Warrior decks, which are a tier four deck. Valkyr Soul Claimer, one star. One star now and later. Bring one it star. On. One star. Huge surprise, four stars now, five stars later. So Bring It On ends up being uh, in the Dead Man's Hand Warrior, which ends up being a tier four deck. So two stars. Dead Man's Hand. One star, huge surprise, four stars now, five stars later, and actually two stars. Forge of Souls, five stars, two stars now, one star later. Uh, one star because Fire War Axe got nerfed, so you can't even Forge of Souls anything anymore. Uh, but look out for this card in the future. And Animated Berserker, one star. One star one now, star. and later. The Lich King, five stars. Five stars now, and later. Bone yep, five Vader, stars. Four stars. Five stars now, and five later. Stars. Bone Drake, one star. Two stars now and later. Bone Drake gets the one star treatment. It briefly saw some appearance in Dragon Priest two months ago, but it has since fallen out of favor. Furnace Fire Colossus, one star. One star one now star. and later. Necrotic Geist, one star. One Still star. One star. Nubian Unraveler, one star. Two stars now and later. Unraveler ends up being one star. It didn't see any play whatsoever. Hulking Geist, two stars. Five stars now and later. Skulking Gust uh, is in fact a 5 star card, almost down to a 4 star card due to the metagame shifting away from Jade Druid a bit. Bell Weaver, 1 star. Still 1. Bloodworm, 1. 1 star. Still 1. Still 1. Cobalt Scalebane, 2 stars. 4 stars, now and late. Turns out to be 5 stars. Uh, Cobalt Scalebane is a monster in Tempo Rogue. Corpse Razor, 1 star. Still 1. Skelomancer, 1 star. Three stars now, and two stars later. Skelomancer ends up being a one star. It fell out of favor really hard one month into the expansion. Sunborn Valkyr, one star. Still Tomb one. Lurker, one. One star. Still one. one. Venomancer, one star. One. Still one. Arphis, one star. Still one. Corpse Taker, five stars. Five stars now, three stars later. Uh, Corpse Taker actually saw a lot more experimentation and ends up in the five star category because Corpse Taker isn't a major variant of Tempo Rogue, and it's even in a major variant of Murloc Paladin as well. You see some very interesting cards being included in order to include Corpse Taker, such as Storm Watcher, and even occasionally Grook Fu Master. Death Axe Punisher, one star. Still Grave one star. Handler, one star. One. Still one. Grim Necromancer, one star. Still one. one. Keening Banshee, one star. One. Still one. Mute Wagon, one star. Still one. Funny, but one. On Night Howler, one star. Still one. one. Phantom Freebooter. One star. One. Three stars now, but oh. one star later. You're actually talking. Yeah, one star. It fell off because Pirate Warrior was no longer played. Prince Velinar. One star. Two stars now, and two stars later. Actually, three stars now. It's a valid tech card in quite a few different decks, uh, notably Control Warlock and Tempo Rogue. Uh, good tech card if you're expecting a lot of aggro, because you can run Tempo Rogue with very few four drops. Rattling Rascal. Two stars. Uh, one star now and one later. One star. Serenite Chain Gang. Three stars. Yeah, actually three stars now and three stars later. So this card ended up being five stars in Zoo Warlock, where I'd like to think I popularized the card by combining it with Keloseth. But also, to an even more surprising extent, it saw play in Tempo Rogue, because Prince Keloseth is that good that if you get a double buff on Serenade Chain Gang, it's really, really strong. Uh, Evolve Shaman also. Even some control decks just ran it as a 4-mana taunt card because 4-mana for 2-2-3s two, two, ended up being pretty good. Taking Abomination, 1 star. Lol. Still 1. Wicked Skeleton, 1 star. Still 1. <laughs> one star. Still 1. Star. Kari Enchanter, 1 star. Still 1. one. Happy Ghoul, 1 star. Three stars now, and two later. This card saw just enough play in the post patch that it is two stars still uh, almost one star it kind of fell out of favor pretty fast but managed to make it into the two star category Hildnir frost rider 
One star. Still one. Mind Still one. One star. Still one. So Mindbreaker gets a nod into two star category range just because it is so devastating against priests that there was enough experimentation with Mindbreaker to warrant it going to the two star category. Uh, that said, it was found out to not be good enough tech. Still one. Prince Talderam. One star. Lol Talderam. One star. Gravedigger. One star. One star. One. one. One star. Still one. One. Fallen Sun Cleric. One star. Still one. One. Prince Keliseth. Two stars. Three stars now. And four later on. So in my first review of Prince Keliseth, I talked about the darkest timeline. I want to give you guys a tangent to the darkest timeline. When you draw Prince Keliseth and you play him on turn two, you suddenly win a much larger percentage of the time. Let's say 75% of the time. If those conditions are the case, your 50% of the time win rate jumps up so much when you play Prince Keliseth on two that the deck actually becomes really good and it's solely because you drew Prince Keliseth by turn two and you played him. And it turns out that we ended up going into that timeline. Uh, for both Tempo Rogue and Zulok, uh, Prince Keliseth ends up being that difference in bumping those cards just over the top. Painted Zealot. One star. Three stars now, uh, drops to two later. Uh, Tainted Zealot, we'll put in the three star category because uh, it's usually a one of in Control Warlock, which is enough to put it in a three star category. Tuscar Fisherman, one star. Still one. Ac Acris yep, still one. Five stars. Two stars now, and two stars later. Acris Veteran becomes a four star card because it is a card in a tier two deck of Zoo. Dead Scale Knight, one star. Uh, still one. one. Star. Wretched Tiller. One star. Still one. One star. No flipper penguin. Regrettably, one star. Regrettably, still one star. Okay, biggest surprise. This is a five star card. <laughs> no joke. It's actually a five star card. As a card that's in a tier one deck, the most popular tempo druid deck right now. Ends up being really strong due to the beast tag and because you can play it and then you can like give everything plus one plus one. The uh, surprise of the set, I would say. No troll! Absolutely a five-star card by every definition. You did it, Snow Flipper Penguin.